Hello and welcome. Uh, another Thursday edition of the Coach's Corner, where each and every week, uh, Coach Dave Serrano and myself spend some time with college coaches from all across the country, and we get to discuss the great sport of college baseball. Today, Coach Serrano is welcoming his student athletes to Johnson University down there in the greater Knoxville area. So I am joined today by the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, uh, head coach Robert Wooded. Uh, you might remember this name uh, as he was a heck of a pitcher. In fact, when uh, he left the University of North Carolina, uh, he was the all-time winningest uh, pitcher uh, in uh, school history. Spent some time in the Padres organization. Uh, also was an assistant coach at both his alma mater and Virginia Tech. Now as the head coach at uh, Charlotte University. Rob, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, Walter, thanks for having me on. You know, just been following your stuff and uh, just appreciate every for a long time and appreciate everything that you do for the game and uh, excited to talk baseball and, you know, all thing all things college baseball and recruiting with you today. Well, having some familiarity with at least one member of your staff, uh, Toby Bicknell, uh, you know, one of the quality uh, recruiting coordinators and assistant coaches, I I'd like you uh, as a head coach to kind of discuss uh, with parents and student athletes that are watching here a little bit about what makes your university special and what drew you uh, to Charlotte. I know you grew up there as a high school student athlete, but what is attractive about the university as a whole that makes it special for prospective student athletes? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So as you touched on, I grew up in Charlotte. I went to Myers Park High School. I'm a 2003 grad. So, um, you know, this is home for me. My parents still live here in, in the city and m most of my best friends I grew up with and went to high school with, you know, them and their families, they all, they're all here as well. So, um, y you know, it's a special place to me. And then, you know, you touched on coach Bick and, and he grew up here. He's a Charlotte Christian grad. And, and um, he actually, not a lot of people know this, my senior year of high school in 2003, uh, his first coaching job, right. When he got done playing was actually being a varsity assistant baseball coach for my high school team. So, oh. So I played for Coach Bick about, you know, what, 20 years, 20 years ago. And, uh, you know, that was a special run. Our high school team, we finished state runner up at the 4A division. And then, um, you know, I went off to college to play and, and Coach Bick went, went over to UNC Pembroke and and uh, he coached over there. And um, from there, he went to Clemson with Coach Leggett as, as the volunteer and then Coach Cook at Davidson and then Coach Kaz at Air Force. And, you um, Coach Henderson at Kentucky. So, you know, I got to follow his coaching journey kind of while I was still playing and got into coaching. And then when that opportunity, the opportunity, um, you know, the summer of 2019 opened up, Mike Hill, our athletic director, uh, who had previously been at the University of Florida for a long time, so clearly has an idea of what winning baseball should look and feel like. He called me and offered me the opportunity to come home. It was a no-brainer for me to reach out to Coach Bick and pretty much just ask him. I said, hey, man, you want to come home and coach college baseball? So uh, thankfully he said yes. And then, you know, the two of us, we just kind of started working the wall together, hit the ground running. Um, that August of 2019, Coach Big got here from Texas. He had previously started and was the state director for Prep Baseball Report at Texas. Um, so he kind of pivoted to get back into the coaching game. Um, we also have another member of our on our coaching staff, Tyler Simmons, who's our director of player development. He's a Charlotte Christian grad as well. Um, you know, he's he he, you know, he coach, you know, he he does everything as far as implementing all the new technologies and all the training methods and that sort of thing. Um, you know, he he does a tremendous job with our program. So we've got three coaches on staff here at Charlotte that um, we all we grew up here, so we don't need a GPS to kind of get around town and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, we've got, you know, Panther season tickets and uh, we go see the Hornets play. And um, there's just, you know, to kind of branch out into what makes what, what we believe makes this university and this place special is, the, is everything that it has to offer. You know, we're the third largest public institution in the state of North Carolina. Not a lot of people know that we have about 30,000 students here at Charlotte. We have a, you know, a, a, a baseball stadium here that you go online and, and you know it's right behind me it's picturesque right here on campus with you know 35 3500 to 5000 standing room only seats right here on campus that um, 
you know, our students can come out to and, and support. And then, you know, so it's just the location and, and everything that the, the, the university and the, and the city has to offer is, is unique. Um, and um, on top of that, it, it's, it's home. So, you know, every player, you know, every player and person that we try to bring into this program, you know, we put a lot of thought into just because on a deeper level, you know, we, we, we take a lot of pride in, 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 you know, you know, we believe that people matter and trying to bring people here that are going to play, you know, play for, you know, what we call the nine across the chest, which we can talk more about, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a really special place and, and it's hard to believe now that we're going into year, year five of this thing. So it goes by fast. Well, I want to talk a little bit about that nine across your chest because, you know, over the last few years and last year in particular, you, you know, this is not a rising program. This is now more of an established program. You know, that 49 or that Charlotte uh, program is, is really, you know, not only a regional contender now, but, you know, beyond that, you know, you're going into places like University of Tennessee. You're competing with the Clemsons, the North Carolinas, your alma mater. Kind of talk a little bit about the, not only the building process, but the caliber of student athlete uh, that you're looking to recruit. Where are they generally from and, and what are a few characteristics uh, that you absolutely look for in a pr prospective student athlete? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, you know, I, I think anybody in baseball can can look at a map and point to Charlotte, North Carolina and just say, wow, that is you know, there's, there has to be some good baseball players there. I mean, you just look, or you look at that, the location that we're in, and then you start to think about all the division one schools that are in the state of North Carolina, you go, you go follow the major league draft and you, you know, just go look at the rankings of, of each state and, you know, North Carolina, I think we're top three and players drafted every single year um, up there with California and Texas and Florida, Georgia, you know, so, you know, it's just a hotbed for high level baseball. And so, you know, for us, you know, I mean, we're certainly we're certainly going to pay close attention to the city of Charlotte. I mean, it's our home and, and the best players from the city, you know, in our opinion, should, you know, should be heavily considering staying home and playing here, which which many have and have been great contributors for us. And then and then from there, um, we we have worked very hard to try. We try to schedule the toughest schedule we possibly can, you know, so, um, you know, I, I think. Last year, I think we had like number seven or number eight non-conference strength of schedule. Wow. Um, a lot of that is because of our location, but a lot of it is, is by design. I mean, we just want to be a program that has the reputation for playing anywhere, anytime, and um, doesn't necessarily mean we're going to win every single game, obviously. But, you know, we want to – we at Charlotte, we just want to play in really high-level, you know, high competitive um, – college baseball games against the best of the best. And we don't have to look, we're fortunate that we don't have to look very far to go find those teams they are all over the place. So um, that's kind of, you know, and then from there on the recruiting side, truthfully, we really just kind of look at our schedule every year. That's going to be very challenging. And then we just say, Hey, can this player help us beat those teams? You know, it's kind of, it's kind of a simple question. And it's like, okay, can he help us beat those teams right now? Or can he help us beat those teams two, three years from now? Okay. And then, you know, we just start to have those conversations and you know, try to identify those players, wherever they may be, whether it's from the transfer portal, the junior college route or uh, the high school level. And then, you know, it really makes no difference to us. We kind of we've got guys from multiple guys from the state of California. We've got guys from Florida. We've got guys from the Midwest. Um, we've got guys who started in Cuba and then made their way over to Miami and they're here now. So, you know, it really just centers around if we feel like players, you know, uh, from an ability standpoint, um, we identify them as capable of helping us compete and win those ty the types of games that we, we put on our schedule. Um, and then the next layer of that is once we identify that, that pool of, those pool of players, um, just the makeup, the personality, the work ethic, the intangibles, uh, all those types of things, do those, do those fall in line with really what we're looking for as well? And then when we can check those boxes we feel like you know we make a run at offering those players opportunities to come to charlotte now having been a former uh unc tar heel and playing under arguably one of the mount rushmore caliber coaches and, and coach fox you have a unique perspective because you've been on the mound in high level 
not only conference games, but as, as high as Omaha, which is the ultimate level as a Division I uh, student athlete. Is that something that you take and you have learned from those past coaches, both as a college player as well as a professional, uh, and kind of teach that and pass that baton of player knowledge onto your student athletes? It's a very unique uh, dynamic that you offer potential student athletes. Thanks. No, I mean, it's honestly, it's a, it's a, you know, I think every coach along the way, no matter the sport, I think it's a very important question to ask, like, why do you coach? And one of, one of the, one of my top reasons for why I coach is I feel, I feel almost an obligation to, um, to pass along the information that I've been fortunate to receive from a legendary coach like coach Fox and, uh, a legendary coach at UNC Wilmington, Mark Scaff, when I coached underneath him, um, you know, and, and then, you know, Scott Forbes is now the head coach at UNC. He was my pitching coach and Roger Williams is now the pitching coach at Louisville. He was my pitching coach. And so I just, you know, you kind of, you know, Scott Jackson, who's the head coach at Liberty, he was the recruiting coordinator at UNC bringing in number one recruiting classes when I was the volunteer assistant there. So, you know, I almost feel like an obligation to, to be honest with you, Walter, just to, 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 con to try to pass along, you know, the, the things that they've taught me and try to put my own spin on it, you know, try to try to take all the, th the lessons that, I, that they've taught, they've imparted upon me and and share that with our, our coaches and our, our players and our support staff. Um, you know, something a lot of people probably don't know. I mean, I mean, our practice plans, just the template of our practice is straight from Coach Fox. I mean, it's the same. I mean, it's 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 the same. It's my own spin. Um, you know, it's the, the, the training that we put in those practice plans is, is designed by our coaches, but just the template as far as just the, the look and the even the font, it's a Tahoma font. Um, you know, it just just the look of it is, is a Coach Fox practice plan. To me, that provides me comfort because I've, I've, I was part of that program for nine or 10 years as a player and as a coach. And um, I just think there's something to it. Um, coach Fox sent an email every single night um, to every player, coach and support staff member all in a group. So, you know, there's, you're talking about 75, 80 people on this email chain and not a lot of people know this, but I mean, from your first day as a, from my first day as a freshman in the fall of 2003 until my last day of the pitching coach as a pitching coach um, in 2019, I mean, from, you know, while school is in session, minus winter break, minus summer break, every single night from 7 p.m. until 9.30 p.m., we're going to get a nightly email from Coach Fox. And that email would have the next day's um, practice plan and some of his thoughts. Some are, some are lengthy, as you could imagine, with his thoughts, and some are very short. And, um, you know, but it was his method of communicating you know, to every member of the organization, kind of what the, the next day, the next week, the next month is should look and feel like. And then as everybody else's, you know, from there, everybody else carries out the plan. So that's something we do here at Charlotte. You know, those things, just the look of our practice plan, which, you know, I'm sure our, I know our coaches know that, that that's from there. But then, you know, I send a nightly email every single night from really from about 6 p.m. right when we get off the field to, 9 p.m. every single night, I send an email, um, you know, with the next day's practice plan and when in, some reminders for guys of when and where they're supposed to be and that sort of thing. And um, I just think those things are very important. You know, just the organization and communication amongst a program is a huge reason why I think Coach Fox was so successful. And then on top of that, just he certainly knew the X's and O's and, um, you know, the fundamentals and you know, we try to we try to impart that on our guys too. What I want you to do here, uh, coach, is kind of bring us up to speed on your that baton being passed from Coach Fox to you. What are some of the differences in today's student athletes that may not have been while you were a student athlete or a young coach at UNC uh, with Coach Fox? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think you start with social media. Like, I mean, I just, I think the pressure, I think the pressure that, you know, that these student athletes have, you know, on their performance being criticized and, you know, critiqued and that sort of thing, you know, when they're recruits, they, you know, they're, they're getting criticized and critiqued and that sort of thing. 
Um, you know, and then we can go into a whole deal on name, image, and likeness and, and those types of things. But, um, you know, I, th- I think those are, I just think there's a lot more noise now than there probably ever has been. And I think there's a lot more pressure on guys to, you know, there's no, there's no perfect human on the planet. And, um, you know, so I, but, you know, but I think, I think, I think so many student athletes across the country, they strive for that, for perfection and greatness. And, you know, when you've got all this noise out there that, that can be critical, um, you know, it can be, it can be hard because every athlete, I haven't, I haven't coached a player. I haven't played with a player, you know, that hasn't been through some form of adversity. It just, it's, you know, I'm talking, I've been fortunate to play with some first rounders and some 15 year big leaguers. And I can point to every single one of those guys and, and, you know, recall some form of adversity that they've had to overcome. And now more than ever, those things are on, can be on display and, um, are criticized and, you know, just guys have to, you know, you kind of have to learn to deal with it. So I think that's, that's probably something that, that this generation has got to deal with more and, um, you know, and then you throw and now, you know, with the transfer portal and that whole thing, you know, I think it's really now, I think, you know, commitment to team, is is something that's probably more we put more of a premium on than anything as far as you know just being two foot in um to wherever you are you know like we're we're all in here at charlotte to to build the best team we possibly can to to host regionals go supers and and contend to go to play in the college world series each and every year and you know you can't you can't go to the college world series you know one foot in one foot out so um you know I, i think just trying to create an environment you know recruit people that, um, you know, that really share the vision and uh, are all in. And, and and that way they know when they, you know, whatever adversity it is, I mean, we tell every player that we recruit here is that, you know, um, you know, you come to Charlotte, there's two things that I promise, I promise you. One is that we're going to coach you with respect. And the second thing is you're going to have all the support you need and you're going to, and that, and that's pretty much it. That sounds a little corny, but, you know, you're going to need that when, when that adversity hits, you're going to need that, that support. And I'm very thankful to say as the head coach here at Charlotte, that we have the support here um, in all facets, you know, whether that's, you know, certainly in baseball, but socially, spiritually, academically, et cetera. Um, and, um, you know, so I, I think it's, I think that that's probably, you know, some of the challenge that I think that that players are having to deal with this day and age. And, um, you know, so they're, they're, you know, it's, it's about, it's about the players finding the right program and, and surrounding themselves with the right people and support system to help them through those things. Well, I think it's in, extremely critical for parents to understand that the weight of expectation has never been greater in college athletics, especially with regard to baseball. You know, you have all the, the metrics and the analytics and things like that. But I really believe at the end of the day, when you're a pitcher and you're on that bump, uh, and everybody's got a phone and a video and this, and, you know, it seems like, uh, some people, not all, some like to revel in, in the struggles of, of young athletes, but it is a massive learning ca- uh, curve with regard to being a high school pitcher, a college pitcher at the highest levels, and then a professional pitcher. And I'm glad you were able to, to broach that topic. Just want to kind of end with when your staff, uh, is is kind of getting into recruiting mode. Where does the high school student athlete fall within your your classes every year? Like, meaning, are you full right now with twenty fours and you're on to the twenty fives? Um, you know, when do you begin to, in light of the new rules, begin to put that high school student athlete into your recruiting process? Yeah, that's a great question, Walter. I mean, I would say. For us at Charlotte, I can really only speak on us, but I think that's important because I think every school is unique. And, um, you know, whether that's challenges from admissions or challenges from whatever it may be, but for us at Charlotte, you know, I can truthfully tell you that we're never done. I mean, we, we can never be done with a class. Um, I mean, we've, granted, he was a division a division two transfer, but we, we admitted a, a division two transfer three days before classes started last year. And, you know, he was a left-handed pitcher and helped us tremendously last year. And, you know, from a high school player standpoint, you know, I mean, we're, as long as a player is still available and if we identify that player that he can help us, we're going to find a way to, to help that player get to our program. Um, we, we, 
I mean, rule number one is never stop recruiting. And, you know, just now more than ever, there's so many, there's so many hurdles to like getting a team to campus with, um, you know, with the draft being in July. I mean, I, I think that is, I think, I think it's impossible to be done because, you know, you're either, I mean, it's just, you, your, your roster is in, it's, it's, I don't know, I'm, it's constantly changing, you know, it's never set in stone. Um, you know, we try to have it as set in stone as much as possible just because, you know, from a team building standpoint and a stability standpoint, you know, you always want to, you want to help guys get into apartments. You want to help guys get into the right classes. You want to, you know, get guys sized for all of their gear so that we're, when they're, I mean, all those little logistical things, but, you know, ultimately if there's a high school player or any player at all out there and we identify that player as, you know, being as good or better than the players that we have here and, you know, it can help us. And as, then we're going to find a way to get that player here. And then from the high school player standpoint, I, I'll just, you know, transparently something that we talk about all the time, like, does this player, does the high school player, are we going to have an ability to be a pro right now? Like, are we going to have to fight the draft for that player his first, you know, the summer before he comes to college? Or do we believe that that high school player has the ability to be a pro in two or three years? Um, because for us, just in seeing a landscape, like I think, I think there there need to be attributes of high school players that point towards, you know, pro potential. Um, otherwise, the Division One level now, with how competitive it is, you know, if it, it's it's just you know you're almost you're almost better off, you know, going going to you know a program where you can if you're not a you know if you're not an immediate pro prospect out of high school or projected to be one in two or three years, go somewhere where you can train and get on the field and get innings and get stronger and get better and get reps, you know, and then, I mean, cause we have tons of junior college players that weren't quote unquote pro prospects, but then they built themselves into pro prospects. Well, now we want those players, you know, to come to Charlotte um, because I just think, I think the division one level is older and stronger and better than it's ever been. Um, and so, you know, to all the high school players out there, you know, just, um, you, you know, just, you can do it. It just, it's, it takes a lot of work. Well, Rob, I want to say thank you from both Dave and myself. Uh, I can tell you honestly, uh, you know, both my boys, particularly Tyler, uh, spent a considerable amount of time watching you on the old ESPN days, uh, when college baseball on television was in its infancy. Um, uh, so I greatly appreciate the work that you and your staff have done. Uh, with regard to, you know, the Niner pride, 49er pride. And I continue to to root for for you and your staff from afar. Please send my best to Coach Bick. Thank you for joining us. I want to let all parents and student athletes know, you know, Charlotte is definitely a destination city. It's a beautiful city, a uh, spectacular campus with outstanding uh, academics and athletics. And if you have any questions, I'm going to be able to put – uh, Coach Wooden's uh, contact information down below. Any questions that you have for me to send to him, I will. Everything that you will need as a family to reach out to Coach and the staff at Charlotte, I will have in the comments below. Rob, thank you so much for taking the time and the patience to join me here today. Thank you, Walter. Appreciate your time and all you do for you know, educating players and families on, on not only college baseball and the recruiting process, but just everything in general. Appreciate it, Rob. Thank you, bud.